Hello guys, this is Adip. Welcome to my channel Movement Science, where I simplify biomechanics with Joe. So if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also check me out on Instagram, where I post pictures of my notes, and the reference time for all the topics that I'm going to cover will be mentioned down in the description. So check that out, and let's get started. In this video, we are going to talk about the wrist instability. Under wrist instability, we will be talking about the two main topics: the DISI, that is the dorsal intercalated segment instability, and VISI, that is volar intercalated segment instability. Okay. So the main difference between DISI and VISI is your DISI has scapholunate ligament injury, whereas VISI has your Luno triquetral ligament injury. Okay, that is the main difference. Now, because of the different ligament injury, the presentation and what the mechanics is will be different. Now, if you see this diagram, looks pretty complex. But once I explain you guys this, this will look like a piece of cake to you. Okay, so let's start with the topic with first dorsal intercalated segment instability. So here, what happens is your scapholuned ligament, right, that is injured. because of which it will remove your synergistic stabilization now if you don't know what this is we have spoken about how your scaphoid capitate lunate triquetrum they stabilize and then move in flexion extension and radial and ulnar deviation the normal kinematics right how the stability works in the proximal carpals i have explained this in my previous video i'll link it over here on the top so you can check that out so once the ligament that is the scapholuned ligament is injured it removes this synergistic stabilization or it reduces this stabilization right and what this does is your scaphoid when the movement is happening will collapse into flexion or it can also call it as subluxation so scaphoid subluxes for flexion and this happens in a dynamic or a static way meaning it will always stay collapsed or during the moment it will collapse into flexion so if this is your wrist joint and scaphoid is somewhere over here right see this is your hand okay like this so scaphoid is right over here below the thumb so when the movement is happening scaphoid will go for a flexion it will collapse into flexion when the movement is happening so that's what i mentioned here the scaphoid collapses into flexion whereas your lunate which is right beside the scaphoid scaphoid and lunate right she looks too pretty so so the lunate is over here so what happens is the lunate and the triquetrum okay both lunate and triquetrum which are side by side over here what they go for they go for an extension that is upward movement so one scaphoid will collapse down and lunate will collapse upward right and this why do they go up or down they basically follow their natural tendency because normally what was happening the ligaments the scapholuned ligament was kind of directing them in what kind of movement they have to go but now since there is injury to the ligament they work as like a unconstrained segments right they are not constrained by anything they just go wherever they want so they follow their natural tendency and all of them act like unconstrained segments and this is what the unconstrained segment movement looks like that is scaphoid goes for flexion or collapses into flexion lunate and triquetrum goes for extension and then your distal carpal bones right the other carpal bones which are there will go for flexion so if you see scaphoid goes for flexion lunate and triquetrum which is the other two bones goes for extension and again the distals go for flexion so there is flexion extension flexion and that is basically a zigzag pattern you can see right and this zigzag pattern of all three segments is seen in your dorsal intercalated segment i try to remember it like this zigzag right so it has z so dc or dz with a zi so that's how i remember that in disi there is a zigzag pattern which happens between your scaphoid lunate triquetrum and distal carpal bones so if you see the lunate over here goes for extension right and this is why so if you see this is extension and that is the dorsal side so based on lunate's movement it is called as the dorsal intercalated right dorsal because it goes in the dorsal side <coughs> now apart from this what also happens is because the scaphoid collapses into flexion you can see 
there is contact between the scaffold and the radius and the contact pressure between the scaffold and radius is pretty high which can lead to degeneration over time but in long term where degeneration actually happens is because the scaffold has collapsed down along with that the capitate bone okay scaffold is over here right that is capitate right on top of scaffold because of scaffold has collapsed the capitate also slips down into the gap between your scaffold and lunate okay that's what i mentioned here the capitate can migrate between your scaffold and lunate and degeneration can take place and this is called as your scaffold lunate advanced collapse okay that is slac which happens in long term like a chronic case why does the capitate again migrate down below because of the ligament laxity right that has been created uh, with the injury and the radio lunate degeneration can also happen because your scaphoid has gone for collapse even lunate the contact area will increase but the lunate has a more spherical articulating surface hence the degeneration seen at the radio lunate articulation is much less compared to radio scaphoid articulation where there is more degeneration now talking about the volar intercalated segment instability visi which is much much less common compared to your disi here what happens is luno triquetral ligament injury is there and what will this do basically a lunate and scaphoid will fall into flexion over here only scaphoid was falling into flexion but this time lunate and scaphoid falls into flexion and your triquetrum which is there which was going for extension over here right before but now because lunate and scaphoid are going together triquetrum is left alone so it decides to go along with your distal carpal bones so over here if you can see scaphoid and lunate they go for flexion right these two so the triquetrum and all the other bones they go for extension so during the extension moment these two uh, bones will go for flexion or they'll collapse downwards and all the others will go for extension and that is what happens in your volar intercalated segment instability now there is a small layer that we can add to this that is the triquetrum is unable to join your lunate right so lunate is over here correct with the triquetrum so normally what used to happen is when scaphoid used to collapse down your lunate and triquetrum together would go for extension and counterbalance the movement of your scaphoid right and that's how the stability would be created now because this luno triquetral ligament is injured the triquetrum cannot call lunate with him to join him to counterbalance your scaphoid so lunate instead joins the scaphoid and triquetrum is left alone with the distal carpals and that's how the volar intercalated segment instability is caused so if you see over here in the diagram your radius is there scaphoid collapses down right for flexion downward is flexion along with that lunate will also go for flexion down right and your c and t that is carpals and your triquetrum go for an extension movement so that's what happens in volar intercalated segment instability this is also known as ulnar perilunate instability so basically your triquetrum extends with all the distal carpals hence we can see that from all these things that we have learned that proximal carpal stability is very important in wrist function and that's what we will learned in the kinematics of wrist flexion extension and your radial and ulnar deviation right you can check out the video in my playlist where i've explained the kinematics of your radial ulnar deviation flexion extension and we come to know that basically the proximal carpal bones right your scaphoid lunate and triquetrum these play major role at stabilizing the proximal so that the distal movement is much more stable right okay so now let's quickly summarize the topic what did we see in dorsal intercalated segment instability your scaphoid lunate ligament will be injured hence what will happen your scaphoid will collapse and lunate and triquetrum will go for extension and again the distal carpals will collapse so there will be a zigzag pattern right where flexion extension flexion will be happening whereas on volar intercalated segment instability what happens here the luno triquetral ligament is injured because of which what will happen the lunate will collapse down correct 
along with your scaphoid because your triquetrum right because your triquetrum which was normally helping lunate to stay with him and counterbalance scaphoid right so this was scaphoid and lunate and triquetrum were together so they would counterbalance the movement of the scaphoid that would happen normally but this time it's not happening because the luno triquetral ligament is injured hence the lunate joins the scaphoid and triquetrum is left alone so he joins all the distal carpals and goes for extension right so that's where the volar intercalated segment instability happens and if you see the lunate over here is moving in the flexion direction correct and that is the volar side and this is the dorsal side so basically in disi your lunate moves in the dorsal direction and in visi your lunate moves in the volar direction right so based on the movement of the lunate you can name these two or you can also remember dz that is z so z pattern is seen or zigzag pattern is seen in your dc and in visi it is your lunate going for volar direction right so with that we finish off this topic that's all for today guys thank you for watching if you like my content please like share and subscribe to the channel it will really help me out and thank you for watching